Another BotCon has come and gone, and with it a lot of announced new toys that we kind of already knew about. Uh, the big one, I think, was Skylinks for everybody. No one predicted that one to be released, especially not as a Combiner War Voyager. Uh, and, like, I'm not usually one to cry, that should have gone to another character, or you should have made a different toy. I kind of am in this one, because, like, if I'm going to have a Skylinks, I want it to be as big as they can make it. Like, give it a leader class toy, go all out, and don't cram the Combiner gimmick into it, especially when it's just going to combine with a bunch of random Autobots. I'm still waiting for my Technobots to get announced, come on. But, as long as Skylinks is the big deal, let's do some cheap pandering and review the last toy that was based on Skylinks in any form. This is the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters version, which of course is one of the Predacon Dragons. This toy line, this toy, this toy line... I have such a weakness for transforming dragons, and then they made a whole line about transforming dragons, and my wallet hated me. But we'll see uh, what made it so mad, starting with this guy. As you can see, he's a very svelte dragon. Very scrawny and skinny in every shape and proportion. Very much a, kind of a land dragon shape, which is a little bit more traditional. I like this type of dragon, so that works out. But you can see what was originally an ice-based dragon has now gone to Skylinx's colors of white, blue, and red, though the blue and red are considerably darker. And you can view this as such, it's just a Skylinx homage, or you can view it the way I view it, which is as a Dracolich, with all these bone white exteriors, these little residual bones sticking out, and just the hint of rotten, blue rotted flesh and just enough muscle tissue to keep the whole thing moving. It gets a lot creepier when you start viewing the toy that way. And I, th I think a lot cooler than just seeing a lame Skylinks homage. Of course, that's just probably too many D&D games in me giving me that opinion, but you know, there you go. I do really dig the head. That's The head is kind of what sells that for me because it does work as kind of a skeletal dragon design. I like it. Really sharp. I like all the layered areas to it and the horns as well. They could be a higher angle, but no, nah, it still works for what it is. As well as I, I do like the broken wing look too. Those always look really cool to me. Um, as far as everything else goes, it's pretty much standard. It's a lot smoother into the legs. There's not as much detailing going on. You can see the claws are done up. If Well, you can see if I, my arm wasn't blocking the light. As you can see, pretty basic, pretty standard. Claws on all sides. Bigger on the back since they are the back feet. You need a little bit more there. And the big tail with the spiked club end, which I do like that design. See, it's not you know, nothing like terribly exciting going on here, but I really do like it. I think the new deco really works, like to transform that from the ice dragon to this kind of undead skeletal thing in front of me. I think it's a really cool redeco. You know, it just happened to look like Skylinks, so they named it Skylinks. That's what I'm going with. It helps me pretend like this toy is better than it probably really is. Um, Deco-wise, there's not much. It's pretty thin on paint. You know, uh, you can see some gold here trimmed around the shoulders and a little bit here on the hip. Not a whole lot. You can see the Predacon logo molded in, and it is the prime version of the Predacon logo. So it's a big dragon head or two dragon fa heads facing each other. It's an optical illusion. So, yeah, I like the beast mode for what it is. Articulation-wise, it's pretty much got everything that you could get in the standard robot mode. You got uh, fully ball-jointed hips. Oh, we're right back to that, are we? Both knees. Uh, well, knee and what would be and was technically an ankle because this is uh, uh, digigrade legs. Ball joints at the shoulders. Rotation and full hinge at the elbow, ball joints at the wrist slash front ankles, what have you. Um, the tail, I wish had some articulation to it. It's molded into this shape. 
Uh, you got a hinge, which is pretty much just for transformation, but it's good for lowering it at least. Uh, the wings actually do fold down and up a little bit. It's a little bit stuck because of how everything engineers. But you do also have these two points of rotation in there, so you can give it a little bit of a variance and a little bit more of an organic look, which is kind of ironic considering I'm trying to make this a bone dragon in my mind. Rotation at the neck, hinge up and down, and the jaw does open. So you've got all of that as well. Tons of articulation and playability in this mode, and this makes it a good beast mode. I will say I wish things locked together a little bit better because you can, as you can see here, the pelvis nah, doesn't really uh, doesn't really connect. There's spots where it's supposed to friction together and stay put with the tail, but because of the slides that these pieces are on, it doesn't quite make a solid connection. So it does kind of lose that effect. So let's get those together as soon as we can by getting this guy into robot mode. And this is uh, not going to take long because this is about as standard as a transformation gets. It is very much in the Beast Wars tradition of straighten out the legs and stand him up. Not a whole lot of tricks going on besides that. Which is kind of unfortunate because I thought we had gotten away from transformations like that. A lot of the Beast Hunter Predacons were like that. and There we go. But I guess at some point one of them had to turn out like that. This is the part where it can really remove you from the experience of the toy. Just because if you're not, you know, if that kind of, if you're into uh, a Transformer to get a good transformation out of it, well, this is kind of going to be a letdown because, well, it's very, very basic. Let's see, we'll flip out the hands here. It's all kind of rotate. Neat. Had to rotate some things to get it all to interlock. There we go. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Wrists have to go that way. Claws go up to form kind of spiky bits on the shoulders. Or elbows, rather. Okay, so we got the heel spurs out. We got these lined up. We got the wings back. Oh, yeah. Let's take care of the head. The head is very Voltron in that it is hidden in the mouth. And it all scrunches down like that. And pretty much in a nutshell, that is what you're looking at for Skylynx's robot mode. If we can get him standing up here. He is quite back heavy, which we will address soon. Come on, come on. Yeah, it's one of those where you got to make sure everything is lined up and everything is... Ah. Okay, hang on. We got we to gotta do it a different way. Got to do it a different way. Hmm. You know, this review is late enough already. You don't have to actually mess this up on, for me. Okay, so we'll put the wings up like that so they're not weighing down so much. It's a little bit more correct that way anyway. So, there we have Skylinks in his robot mode. And as you can see, there's really not a lot changed here. We've got the same arms, the same legs, the same wings. We've really just changed up the torso a little bit. And by change up, I mean you can see the underside of it now. So that's uh, kind of unfortunate, but you know what? It it get you know it you know well it work it kind of works. I like how the colors get laid out here. All that blue in the upper torso and the red sticking to the legs. I think it really works design and artistically. And there's some extra elements that are shown here that I really like. But first we show the main new element, which is the head. And it is kind of a funky head. I will give you that. Um, you can kind of adjust the helmet just to, you know, try, try and get a little bit more of what you like there. Now, when this was an ice dragon as Skystalker, um, he, this kind of made a little bit more sense because it's a very sub-zero-ish face mask. You get a little bit of like Mortal Kombat Cyber Ninja out of this. And that made sense when it was a Cryo Dragon, but now it's uh, it's, it's kind of weird. I don't know, it still, it still kind of works. Like I kind of like the face design. So, it, you know, it does get kind of taken out of it because it's a it ends up being kind of a tiny face just sticking out of the dragon's mouth. And it stands up really high on his body. Like, like okay, I know I've mistransformed things in the past, but for the life of me, I can't get it down lower, and every photo I've seen has the same problem. So, there you go. 
Uh, what I really like, design-wise, though, is that torso. As you can see, they did paint up this blue to kind of separate out the two sides of the chest. And they actually painted these into gold, which not only looks nice, but also gives this rib cage effect. You start to see where I see this as an undead zombie dragon now. You know, it, they really did kind of play into it a little bit, so I'm going to go with it. Uh, beyond that, not a whole lot new is shown. Uh, you can see a little bit more extra gold on the pelvis and the knees. Uh, beyond that, it's pretty much the same deco. And it's pretty much the same articulation, too, since it's pretty much the same limbs going on. Uh, the neck does now uh, rotate the head around, and like I said, you can change the head to make his helmet look a little bit more agreeable. You do get a, a, a waist articulation now at a slight slant, which is kind of odd, but it works. And aside from losing things like the wrists because the dragon feet are no longer out, you pretty much have the same level of articulation. So he actually ends up being quite poseable between all of his ball joints and extra hinges for his beast legs. And for that, he does actually work quite well. Now, you do have to hope for very strong joints on this toy because the wings are so heavy and because sometimes these heel spurs just don't want to quite go all the way down. Like, you've really, you, got, you really have to kind of play with the legs and try and figure out some kind of balance between them. I guess I should be doing that, but I like his legs straighter than that. Right. So, there's a little bit of playing you have to do. You kind of have to learn how this figure wants to balance before you can really get some good poses and balancing out of him. But once you do, he does a very good job at showing off some action poses. Now, for a little bit more playability, we have that little thing I took off the tail, which does attach onto his hands and can form something up. Hang on. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm doing that, right? Why is it not clicking in? No. Oh, well. It actually does form up onto his hand as some sort of weird club weapon. If it would actually connect and not embarrass me on my, on my channel. There we go. And it's kind of ridiculous because like all the all the beast hunters dragons have some kind of detachable and reattached weapon. This is mo the most ineffectual and the smallest by far. So that's uh, kind that's kind of unfortunate for him. But he doesn't need that because he gets actual weaponry in the form of disc launchers, which can rotate all the way from his beast mode all or all the way from his wings all the way down to launch forward. Disc launchers, as I've said before, is kind of a rare gimmick, and I kind of like when they use it. However, as is traditional, I will not be firing them on camera, because everyone knows every time you fire a projectile and you're not watching where it's going, uh, it shatters because this is all, tra this is all, look, look, it's all metallic plastic with swirlies in it. I don't like plastic with swirlies in it. This makes me scared for these in the future. Though it's still a fairly new toy, I haven't heard of any GPS issues, but just just in case, yeah, these are never going to be launched in any way, even if I am paying attention to where it's going. So, disc launching, good. Gold, plastic with swirls, bad. So, at least they tried. I like that he had a little bit of variety compared to some of the others. You know, it, it's a neat little way of using those wings. It was spread out like an angel now. So in a nutshell, that pretty much is uh, Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Target Exclusive Deluxe Class <sighs> Skylinks. Uh, not worthy of the name, I will admit, since it is very, very different. And it's pretty much just the color scheme and a few elements of the Beast Mode holding that homage together. But I do really like the colors. I like the new characterization it gives the toy even if you have to head cannon it a little. And I think it was a good pickup for its time. I, 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 this is one of my favorite of the dragons that came out. Now, that's wholly, you know, my personal opinion. If you're looking for a more complex transformation or you don't dig that scrawny design or the weird head shape, then, yeah, you're not going to really go for this. Much more in the grim wing category, and I don't blame it because that probably is my favorite which now I just committed myself to reviewing him. But anyway, I think it's a good toy. 
And I don't, I, I think it did, it got uh, roughed up a little bit just because the name did not endear itself to Skylinks fans. But now we have a new Skylinks toy. So you can lavish love on that and maybe appreciate this guy just a little bit more for what he is on his own. Or continue to hate it. I don't know. It's just my opinion.